Hello and welcome back to part two of our three-part series entitled Popular Tools Used by the Market to Forecast Henry Hub Prices. And today, I'm going to focus on some heavily used technical indicators. But before I do, as a quick recap, in part one of this series, I discussed the pros and cons of various third-party price forecasts, including the NYMEX Future Strip, Wall Street Consensus, U.S. government forecasts from the Energy Information Administration, and forecasts from independent consultancies. I also just want to reiterate that our podcast today is meant to be educational and informational in nature. It's neither intended to be a price forecast nor any kind of trading advice in that part. It is simply part of our ongoing discussion on how the U.S. natural gas market works, especially now that the U.S. market is becoming more intertwined with the rest of the world. As I mentioned last time as well, this is meant for a more general audience, so our apologies in advance if the subject matter may be a bit too basic for some of you. But even if it is, we still hope you're able to benefit from this. Okay, I'm going to start the conversation today by talking about technical analysis, which by nature is looking at past price behavior and extrapolating that to potential future price movement. This is done by charting historical price movements as being on a periodic basis, which is usually daily, but can be as small as several minutes, in order to find recurring patterns and shapes that could signal where a particular market goes next. So I'll come right out and say that there are folks in the world who are quick to dismiss technical analysis as voodoo magic. A standard caveat in the investment industry is past results are no guarantee of future performance, and the same certainly applies here. I mean, are you really going to recommend to your board of directors that your company needs to embark on a major long-term capital spending program because a technical chart is showing a particular pattern? You think they'd sign off on that? To further the point, I love this excerpt from the book A Random Walk Down Wall Street by Burton Malkiel, a former finance professor who used to perform an exercise with his students where they chart coin flips as though they were stock price movements. He described one exercise thusly. One chart showed a beautiful upward breakout from an inverted head and shoulders, a very bullish formation. I showed it to a chartist friend of mine who practically jumped out of his skin. What is this company, he exclaimed. We've got to buy immediately. This pattern's a classic. There's no question the stock will be up 15 points next week. He did not respond kindly when I told him the chart had been produced by flipping a coin. No one really charts trades against coin flips, of course. But the idea here is if the security price movements, if they're truly random, then chart patterns can appear for no real reason. And therefore, technical analysis should be useless. The same notion gets applied to the stock markets. If the markets are completely efficient, and if stock price movements fully reflect all available information, then future stock price movements are entirely random, and therefore no one should be able to outperform the market over the long term. But if that were true, nobody would have ever heard the names Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch, George Soros, William Gross, Geraldine Weiss, etc., etc. Just several years out of college, I leaned heavily on my economics degree to help analyze the markets. Now, seemingly more times than not, many more times than not, if daily fundamentals turned bullish, natural gas prices would fall and vice versa. Well, how could this be? Well, the reason is that I learned that there was another set of market thinking out there that was putting actual money into the market, and lots of it. Those were technical traders who were using those signals from price charts to influence, if not outright drive, their decision making. Fast forward to the 2000s, and I saw firsthand sell side equity research analysts use technical analysis to time when they put on their buy, hold, sell recommendations. And during my brief tenure on the buy side, I saw institutional investors incorporated this as part of their stock selection strategy. So after 30 years of following and studying markets, my personal observation is this. Long term, all prices are determined by the forces of supply and demand. But in the short term, there is noise that prevents those market fundamentals, those fundamental price signals, excuse me, from forming. Technical analysis can help make order of this noise. Plus, 
Others trade real money on it, and that can move markets. Therefore, and again, this is my personal view, all market participants should at the very least be aware of what technical analysis is telling us and incorporate this into their shorter-term thinking. Now, as I've said numerous times on this and on part one of this podcast series, nothing I say today is meant to be forecasts or trading advice, but I do want to spell out a few of the more popular and heavily used technical indicators by U.S. natural gas futures traders. First of all, just know that there are several types of charting, including regular bar charts, Japanese candlesticks, and market profile. Each of these generate different trading signals, but I'm just going to focus on regular bar charting for today. And here are some of the more popular technical indicators and measures that traders and analysts and so forth use. One are trend lines. The longer they take to develop and the more times they are successfully tested but hold, the stronger they're considered to be. These generate both short and long-term signals, so these are very popular. They're quite popular, in fact. Another indicator, it's just simple moving averages. These are very easy to implement, and 200-day moving averages have often been quoted, have been off-quoted benchmark, pardon me, from our market sources in our stories. By nature, it takes a while for 200-day market averages to form, so there's more of a longer-term element to them. A third very popular group of indicators, this is a relative uh, RSI or slow stochastics, relative strength indicator, RSI, and then slow stochastics. These are both overbought and oversold indicators. Now, I won't get into the details about how they're calculated, but generally speaking, when they rise above 70 to 80 or fall below 30 to 20, the market is considered to be overbought and oversold, respectively. In volatile markets such as natural gas, conditions can become overbought or oversold very quickly. So we believe that these are much more short-term indicators, at least for natural gas. Indicator number four, Bollinger Bands. Think of this as a statistical bell curve around a moving average, say the last 20 days of trading. You may recall from your statistics class that in a normal distribution, Roughly 95% of all observations are expected to be within two standard deviations of the mean. Thus, the theory goes, if the market reaches the top or the bottom of a Bollinger Band, the market is overbought and vice versa. Now look, this logic isn't perfect because a 20-day moving average in a commodity as volatile as natural gas probably isn't normally distributed, but you get the idea. Again, this is more of a short-term indicator, particularly for commodities that are far more volatile, such as natural gas. One more I want to talk about today is symmetrical triangles. Now, just know in general that chart patterns can be very tricky because they're easy to misinterpret. And too often, traders will look at a pattern and see what they want to see before the pattern fully develops in fear of missing out on a price move. However, we believe symmetrical triangles are relatively easy to spot. Now, think of a greater than or more than sign on your typewriter keyboard. As you move from left to right, the top and bottom borders rise and fall at the same angle towards an apex to the right. That's a symmetrical triangle. Now, these usually come with a steady decrease in traded volume along the way. The theory is, is that as that volume declines, it's because more of the market is waiting on the sidelines looking for a clear direction. And once prices break out of the triangle, the market is expected to continue trading in that direction. So it goes to theory at any rate. But I know that a lot of my old Wall Street buddies look for these triangles very closely and get excited when they form. Anyway, as I said earlier, the past is not a guarantee of the future. But that's the general scoop on how some of these more popular technical indicators work. And if you want to learn more, there are lots of books out there on the subject, the classic one being Technical Analysis of the Futures Market by John J. Murphy. That's it for part two of this three-part series. Again, if you'd like to go back and listen to part one, and also please keep an eye out, out for the series finale of this series, which is going to be about market sentiment signals, and that should be out shortly. Until then, thanks as always for listening and talk again soon. Be well, everyone.